Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the March Infrastructure Committee meeting uh, for 2021. Uh, not usually me in the hot seat here, so thank you for having me. Um, and we'll note that in the apology. So I'm just going to open us with a karakia. Inoi tato. Kia hora te marino, kia whakapapa punamu te moana, hei horahi mā tātou e te rangi nei, aroha atu, aroha mai, tātou e tātou tātou. Hui e, tai ki e. Kia ora. Right, so we'll crack straight into it. Um, first thing, we'll take apologies and declarations of interest, and then we have uh, Carmen here this morning to do a deputation to us uh, on regarding item 5.1. So we have apologies from Councillor Felicity Foy, uh, Deputy Mayor and Court, and Councillor Kelly Stratford. I'll move those apologies. Can I get a seconder, please? Yeah, thank, thank you, you. Councillor Music. All in favour? Those against? No carries. Just a right, point of order, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you, Mr. Go ahead, John. Um, I just. Just in, um, want to get an understanding of your position as chair. Do we actually have to nominate you as chair, or are you automatically chair? Are you deputy chair? No, I'm not. My understanding is because Councillor Foy is not here as chair and deputy mayor court as deputy chair are not here. Uh, it was next cab off the ranks. I don't have any reason to believe that we need to put a resolution in place for that. Uh, you need to chair? No, through the chair, that was my understanding as well as both the chair and the deputy chair were, oh, the deputy mayor, sorry, and the deputy chair were away, then it was up to them to appoint and choose who would chair the meeting, and as long as the three parties agreed, then it was good to go. Okay, that's so long as you just to check there. Thank you. I mean, I'm very, very happy with you. I'm, I'm supporting you as chair. I just want to make sure that you all create the equal position. Sure, have you done that? Yeah. I'll, I'll move. I'll move Rachel as the chair. I'll see you, All in favour? Aye. Right. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, for taking us up on that. Thanks, Rachel. Appreciate it. Uh, Carrie, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Carmen, the floor is yours if you wanted to. Um, you're either you're welcome to move your seat forward or just stand up at the podium either way. Uh, for members of the committee, we have uh, some photos here in regards to uh, item 5.1 and the deputation the council is making to us today. Over to you. Thank you for being with us. Morning, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, John, I think I've met you down at the Cumber Road Gates before. Yeah, how many years ago was that? Man? That was a while ago. This has been going for a while. And I thought it was done. Never mind. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure if you've got this, but this is just um, a two-year snippet of um, emails that I've uh, in the discussions. The, the emails go back seven years, but by the time I got to seven years worth at the beginning, I would have been an old woman. So um, I've started from the 6th of the 8th of 2019. Um, so, as you know, there's... Oh, sideways. OK. So there are a uh, quite a, a long line of gum trees along the Poopons right-of-way, which have been, over the last seven years, um, falling on my boundary fences, smashing my fences. My cows get out on the road, yada, yada, yada. So um, I've had enough. And anyway, fast forward to 2019. Um, I managed to set up a meeting with Steve Little, who was the infrastructure manager with council at the time. He looked at the gum trees and acknowledged they were a hazard and needed to go. We also showed him the pine trees around the poo pond. The trees are fully mature and needed to be harvested. They've been planted right next to the boundary fence and as a result are popping posts out of the ground and branches are also falling on my fence and breaking the post suppliers. So there's two of my boundary fences, fences are being affected, one by the gum trees um, another one down the bottom by the pine trees. Um, 
he concluded the trees needed to go and the fences needed to be replaced. We explained to him that as the trees are of good quality, any money raised from the log sales could go towards offsetting the costs of felling the blue guns. We also offered to help replant natives around the pond. My husband's a forestry contractor. We can get a lot of guys in there, get the job done quick, smart. Um, so anyway, on the 5th of the 9th, 2019, I still hadn't heard back from Steve, so I emailed him. Um, on the 11th of the 9th, 19, he replied to me saying he'd been very busy. He had spoken to assets people about trees and fence, and he said an asset manager would call me. Um, I never heard from an asset manager, and I never heard anything else from Steve Little. Um, which is a problem we've had over the last seven years is the people in charge keep leaving, so we have to start again and go through the whole explaining of everything again. On the 2nd of the 2nd, 2020, which if you look um, at, there's two sets of photos. One, you, you'll see the branches broken off and it's across the road. Um, uh, a massive branch of a heavily pine cone laid a red daddy pine tree smashed a section of my boundary fence. Um, and that's the pictures there. Yep, you can see it there. You'll have to get your head on the side, but that is, that is not a whole tree, that is just one branch. And it was full of pine cones, so the weight is there we go. So you can see where it's snapped off, and it's landed across the road, and there's several other pictures that show it through my fence. There we go. Uh, this, that, that picture there on the left of the stumps on the ground, I just took that yesterday. So it happened in February last year and those logs are still there. They're not impeding on my land or anything, but they're on my berm where I planted a whole lot of natives, so they've all been squashed. Um, yeah, you can see they're really ugly, gnarly trees. They're at the end of their life, so they really need to go before somebody, and this is my biggest concern, gets squashed and their little transfield trucks and sucker trucks and whatnot, you know? Um, okay, so after a few days, transfield staff had cleared the right-of-way and normality resumed for them. I waited to see if they would repair my fence. Two weeks later, nothing had been repaired, nobody had contacted me, and I couldn't graze my paddock. I phoned my insurance company, who advised me to repair the fence and send it to council. They reassured me that if my animals got out due to the breakage and caused an accident, they would hold the council liable. So my husband fixed the fence. It was fortunate that no posts were smashed at that time. We needed to replace a few wires, join a few wires, and replace several battens. I duly sent council a bill, my first ever in the seven years of having my fences smashed, for $109.25. Council informed me they could not pay it as I was not site-wise registered. This was later resolved as one-off payment. An arborist was also called in to assess if, in fact, my repair bill was justifiable. <laughs> At this point, I completely lost the plot and emailed John Carter. I assume he's here somewhere. <laughs> he's <up there. laughs> in March 2020, Mayor John Carter visited. I'm watching you. Um, he said it was obvious the trees needed to go. He said it was clearly a maintenance issue and he shouldn't have to be involved. I asked him if he wanted me to get a quote for the gun tree removal from a logging contractor who had removed gun trees for me several years prior. And he said, yes, go ahead and get a quote, which I did. Um, that quote was from Marcus Smiley, um, which you may or may not have, I'm not sure. On the 13th of the 3rd, 2020, Julie and Tony emailed me to say she was following up with Martin Smiley to discuss the logistics of the job. Following that email, following that email came through from John Carter to Andy Finch asking him to contact Marcus about the job. Andy replied, all was in hand, with the only issue being Marcus wasn't site-wise registered. 5th of the 5th, 20, this was when I sent the, counts, uh, sent the bill to council for the fence re repair, which was initially refused. I did not charge for cleaning up the mess left behind. Um, there should be a picture of the mess that was left behind in that first lot of photos. Um, 19th 5th, 2020, an email from Julie Catoni, apologising for the delay, still progressing with the tree filling quotes. Arvo's report also required to support my $109.25 expense repair bill. 28th of the 5th, 2020, email from Emma Healy, confirming my ex brush of the payment of 109.25 and confirming an arborist report would be undertaken to determine the future of the trees that appeared to damage the fence. It's almost like insinuating I was making it up, I found. 
Um, and you've got the photos of the damage. Uh, 11th of June 2020, I emailed John Carter to express my dismay at having to get a very expensive arborist report to support such a small repair bill, but also to thank him for his continued support in the matter. Uh, 6th of the 7th, 2020, I emailed Joel Ikitoni to see if he was making progress on the start date for the trees. As I had heard nothing, I also needed to inform her that I was going to be able to work in for four weeks with our forestry crew in Auckland, so I didn't want any work undertaken while I wasn't there. I also asked her if she could make sure, uh, make contact with the sucker trucks, asking them to keep the right-of-way main gates closed, as tree breakage is always worse in the winter, and if the gates are open, my stock get out on the road, yada, yada, yada. She acknowledged my frustration and said she would contact me again on the 10th of the 7th, 20. Uh, 13th of the 7th, 20, Mayor John Carter CC'd me into an email from Andy Finch saying that finance have advised that an arborist report was required to confirm the trees needed to be felled before public money could be spent removing them. Um, an interesting point to note, in June 2013, which is the first year that I started um, having conversations with council about getting rid of the gum trees, um, and they declined at that time, several of um, the trees along the right away fell over um, in that heavy, heavy rain and ripped sections of the bank out. I think the track was um, insurpassable for about two weeks while they had to get diggers in, remove the trees, rebuild the road. Um, I would hate to think how much that cost, but I'm sure you probably all have that information somewhere in the files. Um, so it would be good to look at that. Um, uh, and then in July of the same year, 2013, there was an even worse flood and more trees fell over, damaged my fence and the roadway. And um, you remember, this is when I think we lost the main road at Muramaku and everyone was going around the rural Pekapeka gut track. So we had a once in 100 year flood in June of 2013 and then another one again in July. So it was a pretty hearing this year. Um, 10th of the 8th, 2020, another email from John Carter asking if there'd been any progress regarding the trees. To my, my knowledge, there'd been none. 9th of the 8th, 20, email from Joel DeCatoni saying an arborist report was in hand and they were awaiting a second quote, at which point they would be in a better position to program and work for tree removal. She said she would be in touch again on the 28th of the 8th, 20. 20 20th of the 8th, 2020, email from Corey Hutchinson saying that he was meeting Marcus at the job site so Marcus could quote the job. 8th of September 2020, CC'd into another email from John Carter to all concerned, Andy Finch, Julie Katoni, Sean Clark, Emma Healy, Philippa Boy, Tania George for a follow-up on progress. 8th of the 9th 20, email from Andy Finch saying Arborist report had come in at 130k, which that may not be right looking at the report that I've seen. Being an unbudgeted expenditure will mean it needs committee approval. No further correspondence until 25th of September 2020. Again, me, John Carter, following up on progress. 28th of the 9th, 2020, email from Andy Finch responding to, responding to John Carter's question. Report was being drafted and would be presented at the December 2020 infrastructure meeting. So that didn't happen. Again, nothing until the 25th of the 1st, 2021, when Mayor John Carter sent an email to all concerned, asking if work was underway. 1st of the 2nd, 2021, again, John Carter asking Andy Finch for an update on progress. 3rd of the 2nd, 2021, email from Tania George saying that a report was being drafted in time for the next committee meeting on the 24th of the 3rd, 2021. And so here we are today. So I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to present my case today, although I feel like it really shouldn't have needed to come to this. And while continuously having to repair my fence is an absolute nightmare, it won't be half as bad as the nightmare council will be facing when one of those branches lands on a vehicle. And there are many vehicles that use that right of way every day, a lot, like probably 20 vehicles in and out in, in the course of the day. It's only a little goat track. Um, and as my husband says, it's really fascinating when a, when a sucker truck drives in, there's a branch across the road, and they've got to reverse out on a goat track. It's, it's really quite entertaining. Um, there is a reason they call gum trees widow makers. They, these trees are a health and safety issue. I'd like to gratefully acknowledge John Carter uh, for his diligence and common sense approach in this matter. Common sense seems to be a deficiency in most government departments. And for him to step out of his office and take the time to actually come and look at the problem speaks volumes. Also to the lovely Julie Katoni, whom I have never met, 
Thank you. You have endeavoured to help me, keep me informed, and you're always lovely to speak to on the phone. And that's it from me. Thank you, Carmen. Um, obviously, <laughs> sorry, I'm over my five minutes. minutes. No, you're fine. Honestly, <laughs> I gave you ten, so oh. not problems at all. It's very clear that you're frustrated um, yeah. in this process. So thank you again for taking the time to be here. I'm going to open the floor to questions now. I'll start with Member Ember. I'm just an estimate. How much does this process? How much does this saga cost you? Just an estimate. Oh, I don't know because we just fix the fence and. Uh, I mean, you know, the worst that could have happened is my cows getting out on the road being hit or whatever. That would have been that would have been a nightmare. But I have public liability for that. Yeah. But you know, the fact of the matter is, it's, if it was my trees smashing a fence, I'd get rid of the trees. Um, no, I, I just wonder whether or not, whether or not it cost you personally or hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, ten thousand. Oh no, 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 no. Because all we've done, we, we can't replace large sections of fence. It would be stupid to do that. Yeah. Because the tr the problem is still there, so we just patch it, repair it as we go. Okay. I, I don't know. I haven't put a quantifiable amount on the time that we've spent fixing fences and. Yeah. So I can't. The photo, just the photos alone, cost me thirty dollars for today. <laughs> Councillor Collard. I um, understand your frustration. I share your frustration. Do you? Because I wonder why the hell we've got to listen to this. But, and I ask uh, our, our team here, why isn't something done? This, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's got to be fixed. Not tomorrow. Yesterday it should have been fixed. I, I, I'm just absolutely gobsmacked that we can't even make a phone call to to say we're on to it, something's going to happen. Oh, it frustrates the hell out of it. I, can, I, I, I sympathise with you. Probably wish we had a, I had to heard something about it soon. Thank you, Councillor Collard, and we will have opportunity to ask staff questions uh, when we uh, debate this item next. Mayor Carter. Anyone no, Madam Chair, I just want to um, ask Carmen if she could address the issues of the pine trees that council actually have planted uh, down around the, the sewage ponds and mm -hmm. just uh, what comment and how much knowledge did the council have of the fact that we actually had mature plant, pine trees down there um, that as you will see in the report that's been presented and offset the cost of um, doing the gum trees and I'm just wondering why it took so long for us to get to our to get focused on it um, on the actual fact we had a commercial opportunity to realise here? Um, well, I don't know why nobody um, picked up on that. We did. Um, but, but you know what? The gum trees, the, the amount of people that I've dealt with in this whole saga of the gum trees, they work in Kaikoui and yet they've never seen the gum trees. You know, if it's good enough for John Carter to go down and look at the gum trees, why why aren't the infrastructure people looking at them? They're the ones. It's their job. You know, it's their you know sector of speciality. That's that's where they're working in infrastructure. And for them not to have gone and actually looked at the problem, and for it to have dragged on for seven years is not acceptable. Um, I don't know. We, we took Steve Little, as I said, in 2019 to look at the pine trees and said, look, if you don't do something with them now, they're not going to be worth harvesting. They're at the end of their life. So, um, yeah, that was two years ago. I, I don't know. I can't explain that, John. I don't know why anybody's not looking at pine trees and saying that they, they should be milled. Because it is an asset, the council. Yeah. So, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so thank you, Carmen. Um, I know when I came down there and had a, look, had a look at them at the time, I think it was all agreed that they should be tased. It was a no-brainer then, and probably a no-brainer now. Mm. So I just, I, I think we deserve an apology for this delay, and I just thank John that I, I knew that John was onto it, so I knew that um, activity was happening, and I was kept an eye on it. But it's really apologies deserved uh, to you and your family for the lack of progress that's been made today, and I'm prepared to apologise for that to behalf of the council. Thank you. It's you know I don't I, I love living next to the poop ponds. It beats a party neighbour any day. Um, I have no problem with the smell. The smell is minimal. I have no problem with the dust. I just planted a row of um, manuka trees along my side of the fence, which are going to get snotted when we fell the um, gum trees, unfortunately. But you know I love living there, and I get on well with staff, although they probably hate me because I tell them to shut the gates all the time. Um, 
it's just I don't want my tree, uh, you know, my fence is getting smashed all the time. It's, it's just really not okay. That's entirely fair enough. Uh, if I don't have any further questions, Carmen, again, uh, this is our CEO. If you, if you have any questions about pine trees, my husband is the best. <laughs> Can I just pick up on the council's huge sentiment with, um, with some of the other councils? I'm the CEO here and I'm accountable for our many successes, but also for our mistakes, and this is one of those. So can I, uh, I apologise? We spoke with Carmen a couple of months ago on the phone. I rang you directly. We had a good conversation. Right, thank, right. Thank, thank you for that. I'm having lost to you in the many contacts that you've just been through. Um, and I can't, I'm afraid, account for anything that may have been mentioned seven years ago because I've only been no, three no. myself. Yep. But, but, and I don't make any excuses. Look, we manage a lot of program work at the rate of about a million dollars every two days. It's programmed, and then we get 8,500 jobs a month yep. just through the public coming to us. We don't have as many of these as you might think. Uh, but when we do, they are completely um, our mistake, and we owe you an apology for the industry. I can, I can I'm trying to think the number of hours you sit down trying to get in touch with people and write after a busy day on the phone. On um, so we're sorry, and we um, hope that um, the elected members will discuss and decide in a way that's favourable to you. But we wait to see this morning how that goes. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. So, um, Carmen, I'm going to wrap us at this point. We are going to debate this item next on the agenda. You're more than welcome to sit through that. Um, we won't be able to speak to the item at that point, but you're welcome to sit in and observe the debate and um, witness the outcome if you would like. Again, thank you for coming and thank you for, for your time. Thank you. We might stay for a while. How long is it going to go on for this debate? Uh, <laughs> how long is it going to be? Will it be seven I'm years? Say five minutes because I'm sure that's what he's telling me that I should be saying. <laughs> All right, everybody. So that brings us to uh, item 4.1 of our agenda confirmation of previous minutes. I'm happy to move for those uh, minutes. Uh, true, correct. Thank you, Member Gardner. All in favour? Say aye. Those against? No. Carried. Fantastic. Thank you. So, item 5.1, Parkway Wastewater Treatment Plant Access Safety Assessment and Action Report. Yeah, Would somebody like to move the recommendation? I'll, I'll move it. Thank you, Councillor. I want a second. Thank you, Mayor Carter. Uh, Councillor Busich and Mayor Carter, I'd like to open the floor to you for opening comments before we invite through Andy for any staff to speak to it. So the floor is yours. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. As I said before, I think it's a no-brainer. No it's, it's a shame it hasn't been done sooner. I would stress that we use a forestry company if we can to remove the trees. Um, and the reason for that is, is the saving of cost. They're experts in that area, and they can recover also um, what value there is in that tree. They look like rough trees. I don't know how much value is in there. But also they've got the equipment and the experience to removing um, um, large numbers of trees. So in terms of, um, so rather than arbitrous, arbitrous, I would say that a, a forestry contracting company, uh, by the looking for recommendation, that's the case. That's my comments. Thank you, yeah. Council of Research, Mayor Carter. Thank you. Do you have any comments yeah, you'd like yeah, to make? I, I just want to um, confirm my support that we um, take the trees down. But I also just want to have concern that we will also be looking at the same time to harvest the pine trees to offset the cost. And if um, Andy or someone can, can just confirm that that will happen, it'll all be one project. Um, and I just also um, want it noted in the minutes of our disappointment that this took so long for this to happen that the I, I, I don't know what went wrong the time that I and Carmen had to spend to get Sean and the operation I focused on this was significant and I want to use it it's a great example Sean for us to use as not what to do and so I do want a, a note in the minutes that we are concerned that this issue 
um, wasn't addressed correctly. Um, Passed the resolution, and then I just want to note her to record our disappointment that this took as long as it did. Thank you, Mika. Oh, one other, um, one, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, one other thing. Interestingly, and perhaps um, Andy or the author of the report might be able to write, one of the things that was significant in the report was that this operation had to carry be carried out um, during summer. And they were writing the report when it was actually autumn. So I just make that point. I hope we can get on and get it done rapidly, please. Thank you, Mayor Carter. Ah, we can see your face now. Uh, just for the record, when you're speaking, we can only see half of your face, which is perfectly fine, but just so that you're aware. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Andy, at this point, um, I'd like to invite you through you for any staff comments to the report before we continue the debate. Thank you, Madam Chair. I apologise. I'll take my whole face away. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Firstly, first, I would like to uh, add my apology to come. Um, to go alongside the Chief Executive. Clearly, um, common sense hasn't prevailed, uh, although process and systems that have been established have. And I think that's the challenge for officers that we um, are always juggling what is logical and common sense against the processes that have been established around the expenditure of public money. Um, and clearly, in this case, um, we haven't communicated and we haven't actioned over seven years as quickly as we should have done. And, um, I will obviously share that I've only been here three and a half, so um, I've, I've joined the short in, in making a partial excuse. Um, in terms of the trees, then, you know, I would remind uh, elected members that any work on uh, any capital expenditure that's unbudgeted. Um, has a uh, delegated financial authority for sure, only up to 100,000, uh, and therefore we do need to ensure that we put support forward for any unbudgeted expenditure over 100,000. And uh, I'd like to remember from note one of the options put forward today does cross that delegated financial authority threshold. So, accordingly, the time it takes to bring the report forward is always going to be challenging. Um, I'd also mention, and, and picking up Carmen's comments, that Council does not have a harvesting strategy. Um, so whilst we have a number of locations where there are um, trees, uh, adjacent Council-controlled trees, at present there isn't a strategy that defines how we will manage those and, um, and how we will look after those going forward, and that is, uh, clearly needs to be on our radar to address really quickly. Um, alongside that, I would also note, um, and this is where all the process comes in, that the trees around the sewer treatment plant are listed um, and offsets carbon emissions through Council's emission trading scheme. So um, potentially felling them and not replacing them would have a financial impact on Council, which uh, uh, would be relatively significant. And I think um, alongside that, the choice of tree that is um, replanted um, does have an impact on uh, the emission trading calculation. So we need to be mindful about what gets replanted. Um, and then finally, in terms of process, I, I would, would also remind the members that part of our procurement process does require all contractors to be site-wise registered. Um, that is something that you, we are quite strong on in terms of health and safety. So um, whilst this sounds like a bit of an excuse-making process, I don't want it to be that. I'm just trying to put a bit of context together and just try to explain to go alongside my apology. Um, I'd like to just maybe just to pass across to Glenn to uh, we'll just speak around the detail and the options. Thank you, through the Chair. Um, I'll just make a report as read and just expand on a few things within it. So um, essentially, well, there was four options in the report. Essentially, there's probably three to consider. Just do nothing is not is not acceptable. There's, there's a bare minimum amount in terms of just removing those young trees that, uh, that according to the, the other trees, uh, 
most hazardous, which is in the report estimated at around 50,000. Then there's the second option, which is um, which is $113,000, which is to remove all those um, those gum trees and some pine trees moving down that access way. Um, that would be um, an amount that would um, that would include the tree removal, felling and removal. It would remove uh, involve the taking down and re-establishment of fences and all that associated work that goes with it. Or there is the fourth option, which has been um, mentioned by His Worship and, and Carmen, which is around um, taking the opportunity to fund this level of activity by removing those pine trees and harvesting them and selling them and using that revenue that we've gained to offset the cost of undertaking this piece of work. Um, so I engaged uh, Northland Forestry Managers to do that piece of work for us. Um, the report is attached, the draft report is attached to the cover paper. Um, they are experts in this area, um, as Councillor Rivers have said, it would be wise to go with such, such a company. Um, they are indicating, based on pretty conservative amounts, that we'd be getting around about 280000 for revenue. Um, for them to undertake the removal of those hazardous trees, as well as the harvesting of the other pine trees that we were talking about, that, that would cost combined of around 230 to 240k, which would give us a net revenue at the end of the day. Um, from that, as, as Andy mentioned, we should set aside some funds to replant and we need to replant if we intend going forward to use that site as an offset for our carbon emissions, which is the reason that they are there at the moment, or one of the reasons. Um, so the report is basically suggesting that that option is, is taken up in the recommendations that we go with um, Northern Forestry Managers to undertake that removal and the harvesting and selling and and we also set aside some funds to the replanting afterwards. And speaking to Northland Forestry Managers uh, in terms of availability for them to do this work, they're, they're, um, they themselves are currently harvesting a block, and when they finish that block, they could then undertake and carry out this piece of work without getting a firm date, it appeared to me in talking to them that they could likely undertake this work during April. I don't need to confirm that, but they will they will get onto it very quickly if they get given the number. Thank you, Glenn. Yeah, certainly, and thanks. I, I, I agree with that to get them in. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, I just had a question, though, and that's what it was really, and, and that is um, you mentioned, Andy, those trees and the carbon offset. Currently, are they part of an ETS scheme? Yeah, okay. Well, then we need to replant them then. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Vesage. Councillor Collard. Yeah, um, for me, it, it's, it's a no-brainer. When we look at the first point of the executive summary and that they pose a health and safety risk to staff and visitors and neighbours, this, this is a problem that has been seven years in the making. If we don't do something quickly, we will be negligent because a risk has been identified here and it needs to be done now to let these poor people bloody have, have some sleep at night wondering about when the next tree's going to fall on somebody. So if we have a reputation for moving at glacial pace. It is critical that this is done quickly, and I hope that what Glenn says that April is a start date for it. Bring it on. It can't come quick enough. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Collard, Member Edmonds. OK, so I'd just make, like to make a comment with this. This this morning and Carmen's speech um, exposes a few of the contradictions uh, of council. And um, the first one is that the council is anyway organised. Um, secondly, the, the the whole idea of health and safety, we, we use 
health and safety as is usually as a, a weapon against the public. You can't clean the side of the road because health and safety. You can't do this because health and safety. You can't do that because health and safety. And here we are, seven years down the track, um, ignoring the health, the public health and safety. So, I mean, that, that, that's another big question, right? Um, there's also the health and safety of staff. And we, we, I mean, we say that's their highest risk, and yet we have staff going in and out of here, and we haven't done anything about it. Um, so I'm wondering why it's taken seven years again. And secondly, and thirdly, or fourthly, um, I resent that a private individual has to incur costs in bringing this to the, uh, the, the uh, attention of council. And so I'd like to amend this resolution in saying that, um, and we also approve the, the, um, the, the payment of $30 for photos to Carmen Zelinski with immediate payment, uh, plus $70 an hour for her time for any extra time that she has to put in in, in actually getting this $30 paid. That's, that's my much. That's much. Thank you, Member Edmund. So you're proposing an amendment to the resolution? Yes. Do you have a seconder for your amendment? Yeah, I'll second that. Yeah, principal. Would you like to discuss that amendment? Oh, Any other members look. like to comment on that amendment? Well, since I made an amendment, I'll, I'll make one. I look, it's, it's pretty straightforward, right? I mean, you know, um, goodness knows how many actual hundreds or actual thousands um, that Rhonda, sorry, Carmen hasn't, hasn't made note of, but she does make the point. She knows she spent $30 on this this morning. That's a, that's a, a done and dusted, and I don't want her to go through any more of the, the rubbish that she's had to go through to get this. And I, and I look, I know what she's going to go through if I don't if I don't charge or don't get her charged $70 an hour for all the time that she's going to spend on this, okay? Because she'll get, she'll be getting put through hoops, okay? And it just simply won't work, be worth her while taking the $30. So let's make it worthwhile. Right, so we have an amendment on the table. Uh, do I have any further comments to that amendment? Uh, Andy or Sean, would you like to comment? Uh, through the Chair, can we just clarify what you uh, what the wording you are wanting? Oh, I mean, that we, they, we, we pay immediately to, uh, $30 to Carmen Zelinski uh, for costs incurred uh, and bring this to the attention of the Council and plus $70 an hour for any extra work she has to do in collecting that $30. Through the Chair, while I um, have sympathy with the motion that uh, the Councillor has proposed, I would just flag that this sets, in my mind, a precedent. Um, right. And the risk, and whilst I've got no, you know, the amounts involved to come in are negligible and we can um, clearly accommodate that without an issue. The, the risk, the president and the risk that it uh, opens up is open slather uh, in terms of any resident or any constituent that feels that it hasn't, they haven't had a response in a timely fashion um, will have the opportunity to use this as an, uh, a way to claim costs from council. Madam Chair, I'd like to point of order here. I don't intend to be, to be debating the staff. Sorry, Member Edmonds, I asked for staff advice on this amendment. You did not this time. You just came in and gave it. No, I invited Andy okay. Lynch to speak. So that, that would be my, my only... Um, my only concern, I would also remind elected members that uh, just within the IMC alone, we have in the order of a thousand um, IFS requests every single month. And to uh, each of those are work activities and potentially um, that opens a massive door for uh, claim compensations. So if I can comment, Madam Chair, since I second it, um, I actually disagree with that advice. The reason I disagree with that advice is this is coming to a council table. Um, and sure, that means that others may want to come to a council table on such an issue as well. It doesn't guarantee anything that's actually happening there. Um, it may create a bit of extra work. People think they can come to the council table and demand some of the other things. But given the circumstances, it's very unusual, seven years of what should have actually happened a long time ago, with all of the health and safety risks, 
with all of the time and effort that, that Cabin has put into fixing a fence and the non-response. Um, I agree with Councillor Edmonds. This is a matter of principle. Mid -mid 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 and this is a matter of principle that I'm going to um, just uh, support it. And that's what that, so let's put it to the vote. Do I have any further comments? Councillor Collard. Yeah, look, I, I uh, am concerned about um, the uh, precedent of, of paying these costs. I feel sure, uh, in terms of on an hourly basis, but I feel sure that we have an obligation to look after fences and things that our trees have killed. So there are some obvious costs here, uh, and I feel sure, well, I don't know for sure, but I'm suggesting that uh, government would be somewhat happy if we just got in and did the bloody job. Yes. That would make me very happy. Thank you, Councillor Collard. Member Gardner, did you want to make any comments? Yes, um, thank you very much. I absolutely um, agree with the um, recommendation and I also agree with Member Edmonds' amendment. Thank you. Thank you, and you Gardner. Mayor Carter, did I hear that you wanted to make comment to this amendment? Uh, not, <clears throat> not to the amend amendment specifically. I will take an opportunity to speak once we've put the motion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Carter. Um, I would just like to speak to the amendment. While I appreciate the sentiment behind it, I agree with Councillor Collard, and perhaps there may need to be a process in which we look at compensating on the expenses in terms of the fence repairs and things, but I don't feel comfortable with the amendment that... Member Edmonds has put up. However, I respect that as a member, he has the ability to do that. So at that point, I will put the amendment. No, sorry, I'd like my closing comments, please. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Um, look, uh, uh, yes, sure. There's precedents everywhere, but we're also setting a precedent um, for the organisation itself is that we don't have to deal with these things because there's no consequence to the organisation and, and the consequences of the public will be damned. So that's the precedent that I'm trying to set here, that no, the, public, the consequences of the public not be damned. Uh, so that's my only comment. Thank you, Mr. Edmund. Kim, if we could put the amendment on the screen and then we'll put it to the vote. Thank you. Mr. Edmund, are you happy with that wording? Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure, sure. I mean, I didn't, it wasn't actually for the printing of the photos. It was more of the, her costs, because um, that was the only ones that she could um, identify, um, and it, which included all the fencing and so forth. So, uh, oh, yeah. <coughs> and, 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 and in the collection of the fee dollars, that's, I mean, it was not the whole issue, but rather the issue of the costs. Madam Chair, can I have a point of clarification, please? Absolutely. Thank you, Mia I just want to get a full understanding. Uh, I hadn't seen this before. Yeah. Happy to with a $30 for Carmen. I hope she puts the bill in and it gets paid. What I'm sure of is what the $70 an hour for ongoing time in relation to this issue means. And no, how do you it was me. Quote. I just want to know. I just want to know. I want to. I want to have a full understanding. It, it was. It was. It was specifically on the issue of the collection of the thirty dollars. Nothing. Else. Oh right. Okay. So, okay. Just, just the collection of thirty dollars. <laughs> so if she's expected to come in here for an hour and justify her thirty dollars, then she gets another seventy bucks right. for doing so. I just want to check to be in the mail tonight. Tonight. That's all. Without any. So can we just can we just change the re the wording to seventy dollars an hour? For ongoing time in relation to the refund of thirty dollars. Yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah, I'll make it with that. Um, what the question? Is. Has anyone got thirty dollars cash that they can give Carmen? <laughs> I'm sure Sean's got one. Don't tempt me, Mia Carter. Don't tempt me. I haven't seen. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you. So on that note, Member Edmonds, if you are happy with the yeah, amendment, yeah. I will put it to the vote. All in favour of Amendment A? Aye. Change. Aye. Mayor Carter? Yes, I'm in favour. 
Thank you. Um, I would like my vote against recorded, please, Kim. So that has been carried, and the amendment becomes part of the substantive motion. Please excuse my terminology here. I'm not great with Just keep timesheets, Callum. Just keep timesheets. We're having a fun for today now. So we have a resolution now in front of us with an A, B, C and D. Did I have any further questions or comments? I have some questions, um, but happy to take any others first. Can I just have it wound down a little so I can see A, B, C? Thank you. Mick Carter, if you're happy, I'll jump in at this point with my questions. Uh, so, Andy, I just had a couple of questions um, around in options one, two, and three. It was really clearly us uh, and how the risk would be mitigated by undertaking those options. I wasn't clear of how much of that risk we were mitigating by going with option four. Notion that it is only some of the trees. What I don't want to um, have happen is that in two years' time, we still have risk sitting there because we didn't address it this time. So I'm just a little bit unclear on that and would like a bit of clarity. Um, I'm really keen to make sure we eliminate all of that risk as outlined in option three, but I know that there are some differences between those options. Glenn, did you through the chair? Yes, option four, although a different provider do undertake the work, is essentially option three plus the half a stage of pine trees at the moment. Okay, that's great. So it's all. Yes. So, Madam Chair, just a question on the replay. Sorry, um, Councillor Busich, I'm just, I haven't finished yet. Okay. So, I note in B that it's approved the removal of some hazardous gum and pine trees over the access road. So, that word some is what makes me uncomfortable. That, that's option two. Yeah. So that's uh, in the recommendation of the report. Um, Point B of the recommendation. Shouldn't be. Right. But it also says as outlined in option four. So it's B of the resolution. So we are undertaking to. Part of the other resolution is right. the removal of some hazardous gut. Yes. Yep. So the word some makes me uncomfortable. Um, and perhaps at the blessing of the mover and seconder, I would like to see that that word some be replaced with all. Yeah, I'd agree with that, Madam Chair, with that amendment. To ensure that we're eliminating yeah. all of that risk in this yeah. process. That's great. Thank you. Mayor Carter, are you happy with that? Yep, that's fine by me. Great. Thank you. Uh, my other two questions were more around the learnings from this and going forward. So the first one is I know that this isn't the only hazardous tree health and safety situation we're facing in our district at the moment in terms of budget and things. So I'm a little bit concerned that we don't have enough allocated budget. Is it a budget issue or a delegation issue as to how we can't address this risk when it arises? Our policy very clearly says with the health and safety risk that we address that. So noting that we are in an LTP um, at the moment, do we not currently have allocated budget to be addressing our health and safety issues across the district? Susan so, Chair, um, so I'm trying to desperately um, hark back in my memory, but I do recall that as we approached the LTP or the preparation of the LTP for this time round, we put a number of operational budget pressures to elected members. Um, one of those included an enhanced budget for tree management and maintenance, which was at the time focused around the chemical redwoods, but would be expanded to, um, to the whole of the area. Um, I understand elected members do not want to support that at that time, um, and therefore there is still a um, very small budget for tree maintenance across the whole of the district. 
That's a great response. Thank you, Andy. So just highlight, highlighting to members that we are yet to deliberate on the LTP, so please keep that in mind. Uh, the last point I had was picking up on, again, the reserves policy, uh, section two, around the management of trees on public land. Um, I think that this is probably a question for me to be taking to the strategy committee. However, I wanted to uh, get the the blessing, I guess, of the infrastructure committee is really looking at how that policy didn't work in this situation. We have a policy from 2017. It very clearly says the process. It very clearly has not worked, and I'm really keen to learn why that is. And also picking up on the note that you made about the harvesting strategy, Andy. I know that our reserves work stream will be increasing uh, over the coming months, so that's really a really good note to pick up as part of that work stream. Uh, those are my questions. Thank you. Do I have any further questions or comments, or are we ready to put to the vote? No, I appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, Madam Chair. Good points you raised. Um, not exactly on topic, but I think there are things that fall out of this. But my question relates to point C, and that is the cost of replanting. I take it that's that forest, so we're not talking about replanting necessarily along this line and therefore creating a future hazard for ourselves. Yes. That's, that's the, the forest. Through the chair, um, my understanding of what I'm going to confirm is that the replanting would be um, the replanting of trees that we currently use in our accounting for emission trading schemes. So that's back process. around, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's not creating a future hazard in the sense that we have access. That's correct. Knowledge, knowledge. Yep. Thank you. you. Happy with that, Councillor Pusich? Mayor Carter, I'm aware that you raised um, the point of timeframes, and we have been cracking in our DMPs with resolution. Um, and I'm aware that Glee made the comment around the ambitious hope that we will undertake this in April. I'm happy to take your guidance, but I think it is important that we capture some kind of expectation from a governance point of view on this resolution. So whether that's this work be undertaken before winter, acknowledging the points that are in the report. Happy for any comments on that, um, Andy. Otherwise, Mayor Carter, if you wanted to put that amendment in. Well, no, I, I don't mind whether it's an amendment, Madam Chair, but I do want to um, have a, a every um, infrastructure committee. In fact, what I would like to have the staff go away and do now is present our selected members with a timetable of when their expectations is that the trees will be milled, harvested, call it what you like, taken down, um, so that there is a definite timetable that a timetable. And the second thing that I would like, um, as a consequence of any decision that we've made today, is that we get a specific income and expenditure report as well to advise us of what the costs are and advise us of what the income is from the pine trees, expecting that we also have to be reinvested to, to um, replant the pine trees. So I'd like those two things. I don't know they need to be a resolution, uh, but I would like them to be actually noted in the minutes that we're expecting a time able to be given to us reasonably quickly, like within the next fortnight. And secondly, that we have an income and a regular income and expenditure so that we're updated on it. That's Thank great. You. Thank you, Mayor Carter. So if we record it in the minutes, then it can be fed into the action sheet. So um, we can pick that up yes. with Councillor Foy when she returns and ensure that that tracks. Um, Andy, are you happy yep. with that? Through the chair, I'm, I'm happy and, and subject to um, your resolution today. We will get Glenn to contact the uh, Northern Forest Managers um, to get the project going immediately after this, this meeting, and then we can firm up on time findings and, and obviously that comes. That's fantastic. That last point is incredibly important, is that ongoing communication with Carmen. So just wanting to reiterate that. So at that point, I'm aware that we've had a very robust debate on this one. I'm happy to put it to the vote if we could get the resolution on screen. Mayor Carter, did you have any final comments? I, I just want also to please just reiterate that I would expect a income and expenditure report regularly, like, you know, every, just to let us know where we're up to from a financial perspective. If, perhaps if you want to take that conversation offline with uh, Chair Felicity Foy um, to progress what that might look like. That would be great. Could we just have a note. The committee has provided timetable to take a report back on the final cost. That'll do. Thank you. Good.
That's good. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Mayor Carter. So we have a res resolution in front of us that the Infrastructure Committee A, approve the engagement of Northland Forest Managers to undertake the harvesting of the pine trees around the oxidation ponds in Cumber Road. B, approve the removal of all hazardous gum and pine trees over the access road out as outlined in option four. C, approve that the cost of replanting of an estimated $4,000 is funded from the net revenue under option four. D, approve the payment of $30 to Carmen Zielinski for her costs and $70 an hour for ongoing time in relation to the refund of $30. All in favour of the resolution, please? Aye. Aye. Those against? Aye. No? Aye. Carried. Thank you. Carmen, thank, thank you for that. Um, I hope you're happy with that outcome and you'll be hearing from the team very shortly. Carmen, I've also just had confirmation from our CEO that the payment in accordance with that resolution has been, been made to you. Okay. Um, I'm probably going to donate it to the Kaiko Problems Club. So I hope you're happy with that. Okay. Your money to do as you wish. Thank you for that and thank you for your time and um, sitting in today. Are we allowed two minutes of just referring to um, John's wants to say a few things regarding um, how he can help um, in terms of when the logging happens and stuff like that. It may be more appropriate. We do need to crack on with the agenda, unfortunately. Chair, would you call me uh, come after the meeting? I yeah. will call you and, yeah. and, and we'll before the end of the day. Yeah. Pick up whatever you've got for Yeah. Yeah, um, because what we're proposing will probably save the council a bit of money. That's fantastic. Thank you for that. Yeah, Sean will be in touch later today. Thank you, Sean. Again, thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, <laughs> All right, so that brings us to item 5.2 of the agenda, Hinky Wastewater Treatment Plant, Capital Works Business Aid. We have a recommendation on the Do I have a mover for that recommendation, please? To get it on the table for discussion? Yeah, Council of Business, move. thank you. Uh, Mayor Carter, you can second. Thank you for that. Thank you. Council of Research or Mayor Carter, would you like to make any open comments before I invite Andy? Oh, Mayor Carter, Mayor Carter, you first. Mayor Carter? No. I, I just think we need to proceed with it. I'm very happy with how it's the direction. Thank you. So my comments then, um, I just had a question really. Um, I'm happy to see the membrane bioreactor MBR system. I did ask for that many years ago with the character series and it was uh, poo-pooed. Um, but I just wanted to know, excuse the pun, what the least um, methane emission uh, options are. So the MBR as opposed to the uh, activated sludge. Thank you, Councillor Usage. At that point, I'll invite Andy to speak. To you. I, through the chair, I was just looking at my um, technical expert in the corner, and we have just recalled that question. Can we come back to your line um, after the meeting? Okay. Uh, so, was there anybody who wanted to speak to this? Do you have to just make a question? Comment? Yes, hi. Can you email me Absolutely. that? Um, I have one other question as well, Madam Chair. Okay. And that is, cubic metres per day that we expected to be uh, this plant, I didn't see it at the moment, uh, that, that we'll be handling. And is it, is it therefore um, taking into account the likely sort of growth? Uh, yeah, through the chair, so uh, it's two litres a second, which works out to around 374, sorry, uh, four litres a second, which works out to around 374 cubes a day. Uh, during rain events, they could get up to eight litres a second. And, and, and given the projected growth in that area, is that, is that, that going to be... That was included in that. So that, for, how, for how long is it going to cover the growth? Thank you, Councillor of Research. Andy, do you have any comments you'd like to make to the report? Yes, through the Chair. Um, this is probably the first detailed business case from the District Infrastructure Committee, and uh, at this point, we're just seeking your views on what is being proposed and seeking your guidance that we move to preparing a detailed business case. And um, 
that is uh, very significant because as we move from indicative business case to detailed business case, the amount of cost and the amount of uh, effort to move the project forward uh, increases substantially. And as you'll see as part of the resolution, um, we're asking you to note that the potential cost to rate payers is not insignificant. Um, and accordingly, uh, it's really just a, a heads up for elected members that when we finally bring a paper forward to award contracts, um, those costs and the impact upon rates will become real for residents. So it's really, this paper is one of a number that we will start bringing forward for three waters. Um, we know that there is a backlog of investment. Um, this is you know, one of the early ones. And it's really just a heads up for elected members that these costs are <coughs> coming to the pipeline and will impact upon rates. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Mayor Carter, did you have a question? Uh, thank, thank you, Rachel. Yes, well, not so much a question. I just, uh, Sean and I spoke briefly about this uh, yesterday. Yeah, the announcement that the government made on the issue of infrastructure um, is uh, just another factor that we will now need to take into account as we develop this project. Um, if we can also combine it with the housing opportunities, um, it may well be that we can get more support from government funding. But I, I'm not, I just, just note that that's all. It's just a fact that we'll have to take into account as we move forward with it. Thank you. Council of Research, did you have another question? Yeah, just, uh, just given that, so I understand that all now why those questions couldn't be answered, but again, looking at a detailed business case, I'd like to actually see one being covered, the cost and affordability, um, that we are doing the consultation with the public, that we are taking into account the growth, so it looks like I'd like to see some projected growth uh, uh, things in there, plus, uh, as, as, as the Mayor pointed out, some uh, potential subsidies for external funding options and uh, give consideration to also the um, climate change being noted as our largest risk. And we, we did notify that, that there's methane emissions and looking at the airport changes to our plant and the way we recover some of that. So all that detail in the report. I can actually send it to you later if you want. I'm just pretty sure you heard what I said. Thank you, Councillor Busich. Do I have any further questions from Andy? I just had a question uh, on page 47, picking up on what Councillor Vucic has said. Uh, it indicates both of these options would have challenges, particularly in relation to climate change and sea level rise. Staff have not undertaken any diligence in this, these options. Um, I get a little bit concerned with that when I hear that we're talking about a coastal community. We've just had our coastal hazard mapping uh, workshops with NRC. We know that what we're facing now is just going to continue to be um, increasing those challenges. So my questions are really around when that diligence work will occur and what touch points we will have on that. And I understand that it's probably in that next stage of business case reporting. And then project scoping going forward, at what point are we endeavouring to consider climate change risks in that? Um, from my point of view, I would prefer to see it in the earlier stages as opposed to the progressive business case stages, but happy to have some comment on that. So to, to the Chair, it is, always, it is always going to be challenging in, in looking at a balance between um, ensuring that we have the appropriate infrastructure for existing communities. So the existing wastewater treatment plant at VEHE is, is reaching the end of its um, effective life and we do need to invest money in that. Um, and we do need to balance the potential impacts of climate change. Um, there isn't an easy answer. I'm afraid, and, and some of some of the answers to the questions you're asking have come out of the climate change discussion. 
um, and some will come out of this, uh, the detailed business case, and we will endeavour to push those teams together. Okay, thank you. So I guess the, the biggest concern is ensuring that the location that we put this treatment plant is not within a, a, a coastal hazard zone. Um, so that's just, I guess, highlighting what my concerns look like and how we could perhaps look at um, addressing that. So if I don't have any further questions or comments. Or closing comment. Councillor Vucic. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to support, and I want to use my closing comment to put point six. Andy, I'll send these two to you. And then it's consideration about the other option given the cost. Because the mayor would know that he, when he, when he uh, visited a certain place, he was given an option of a free MBR system that does 500 cubes a day uh, for trial. Uh, so there are potentially other options actually out there that could uh, help reduce the overall cost and affordability. So those are my closing comments. Councillor Message, how would you like that captured, given that? Um... I'll, I'll, send, I'll send Andy an email. Uh, I don't, we don't need to capture it because this is. Um, yeah, he's going to do a detailed report, and I'll just say what potential things I'd like to see in the detailed report, as I'm sure others would like to see. I guess then just highlighting that point A um, is asking for governments to indicate that there is a preferred option. So if you're asking for further scoping. The preferred option, I think, uh, I think going down, uh, uh, look, taking all those things into account, my preferred option is, as I said before, the affordability, looking at a, a one that is modern, less methane emission options, uh, and pulling all those things and looking at affordability. But I'll send this through to, to Andy. Uh, and I'm sure that you would include all that into consideration when the final report comes through. Right, well, if you're not proposing any amendments, I'm happy to put it to the vote. So we have a resolution in front of us. We could get it on the screen, please, Kim. That the Infrastructure Committee recommends that Council A approves the detailed business case preferred option three membrane bioreactor to be located on the existing Hehe wastewater treatment plant site to be advanced to detailed design and community consultation and B notes the potential cost of the preferred option and the impact upon rates. I have a mover, Council of Research, seconded by Meg Carter. All in favour? Aye. Those against? No? Carried. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, at this point, I know we do only have one item left on the agenda, so if everybody's happy, I'd like to just crack on with the um, yes. 6.1 IM business report. Yes. I'm happy to move that the Infrastructure Committee receive the report Infrastructure and Asset Management business, Monthly Business Report for January 2021. Do I have a second of these? Thank you. Thank you for your commitment. <laughs> the resolution is on the table. Andy, did you want to speak to your report at all? Um, I would like just to, to say a, a, a few words. And um, you probably have heard me before comment that when I first arrived at Council, the, um, the celebration of what I am achieved. Uh, to elected members with probably no more than one paragraph every month, which was a poor reflection of the volume of work that uh, I am uh, undertaking every single month. From that humble start, um, we've built a report that I think has grown from month to some 170 pages of information and whilst there is a, uh, a good lot of detail in there that is available to the public on, on the website, um, the council website, I am beginning to hear the um, some concerns around the accessibility and the volume of information. So uh, whilst we continue to publish uh, a very large report that tries to cover off everything that's happening across in the infrastructure terms across the farm. And we are looking at uh, how we might condense the information in there into a more um, accessible and consumable format. Um, and the target is trying to get it under 50 pages. Um, so that's something to look forward to going forward. But in the meantime, we will continue to. Um, publish large papers, um, just to give you the flavour of uh, everything that's happening. That's great, Andy, and I have to admit that when I read this month, I got a feel that the format is becoming more and more effective as you're getting a feel for what this report looks like, so I was finding it really easy to find information. 
Um, as a mover, I might open with some of my questions if everybody is happy with that. So page 59, uh, the graphs on page 59 and 60 indicate that we're tracking the low forecast currently in five out of six activities. So I'm just looking for a little bit of governance comfort that we um, have plans in place to meet those forecasts by the end of the year and what that looks like. So through the chair, at the moment, um, we are tracking behind capital expenditure um, for year end. We're, we're still uh, aligned to meet the overall uh, KPI, tar KPI target for capital expenditure. Um, we are looking at uh, how we can accelerate programs, and we will be bringing a uh, we continue to bring reports to both roaming and three water support area meetings around uh, what projects are at risk at, but we will bring a future report through to infrastructure committee with a bit more detail on that. That's great, thank you. Uh, my next question, page 77, I was just hoping if we could get a quick update on the sweet water if possible. <laughs> uh, through the chair, there was a project uh, control group meeting this morning, um, and uh, just uh, to highlight where we were at, is there is a second hearing, uh, a second meeting with the judge regarding the uh, appeal on the LB holding plan on the 26th. Of March, which is Friday. Following that, we will get further direction around the That is looking um, when we will get final, we anticipate the final decision on access to the Elbury Holdings land. In terms of the main pipeline contract, then today we had um, a steer from the project steering group that for Sean to be able to sign the uh, main contract for the delivery of the pipeline work. Um, and that is in accordance with the previous council resolution. Um, the caveat I put on that is we are proposing splitting the contract into two stages. The, uh, the first stage being the work on the other holding land, which we can't uh, we can't progress at the moment. And the second stage is for the rest of the pipeline work and connection to the wastewater treatment uh, the treatment plant. Um, at the moment, we are still looking for uh, for access to a secondary water source for Kurtaya ready for next summer. Okay, that's great, thank you. Uh, two more questions and then I'll send the rest through by email. So page 93, um, the same question that I've been asking every committee meeting, sludge strategy has red lights all over it. What's happening with our sludge strategy? Just looking at my team and they've got their heads down. Can I, um, <laughs> I think uh, the best, way forward for the sludge strategy uh, is for us to um, prepare an update for this committee so that we can give you more detail around that. Um, Sorry. Can I... Yeah, we are actually planning that update. That's actually in progress at the moment for the, for the next infrastructure committee. We just had um, a couple of resources not available for a period of time, so we've just been trying to commit to that date. But that's the plan is that it will be at the next infrastructure committee. Fantastic. Thank <laughs> you. Exactly what I wanted to hear. Last question, page 96. Um, there's a note about a growth and infrastructure demand forecasting. In the consultation that I've been part of in the last two and a half weeks around the district plan, a lot of what I'm hearing is um, population data being challenged, the population data that we as a council use uh, and suggestions as to how various community members feel that we could improve that. So it was just, it's really a question as to what that demand forecasting looks like and what the, where the oversight of that sits. Um, I'm keen to have a look at what that looks like, if possible. Please, Chair, can we come back to you on that? Yeah, we um, can take it off uh, clearly we, we take our first predictions from um, the work that's done within 
strengths we can't see the program, we look around uh, uh, what the growth projections are and where that's going to occur, and that's also a line of students. Okay, we can take that offline. That's great, thank you. Uh, that is me for hogging the floor. Do I have uh, any further questions on the report? Um, just, just a comment on the report generally. Thank you for the questions, by the way, Madam Chair. Um, some of those things are the concerns I have. Uh, but on the overall report, I, I, I think it's great that we got all this detail, Andy, and that answers many of my questions. So maybe I don't have to ask a lot of questions, but I don't want to lose the detail you're saying about um, summarising it. Yeah, that might be quite good. May I suggest that if there were ways that you can take the detail that you got from your operational data systems, which, you know, as we know, you've got um, project management and all that detail there, and perhaps use IT and some smarts to generate some of this detail, make it available online, summarise it, which can come to this committee, but then all that detail is back there. So that, that I think can meet most, most um, desires, to have the detail when we need it, to have the summaries which highlight issues, and at the same time, um, make it easier for you to generate these reports. Thank you. 